out of this. Greetings, I'm Shad, and I'm here at the Abbey Medieval Festival! Yeah! So, the Abbey Medieval Festival is basically the biggest medieval festival in all of Australia. And I've had my eye on it for quite a few years saying, I gotta get to this. This is, this is awesome. And so I'm finally here, but one of the things I knew I wanted to do when I was coming is to get a good medieval outfit. What you see me wearing here. With this outfit, you haven't seen me wear this on my channel. This is all first time appearing on Shadowversity. Now, one of the things that I love about coming here is you see a clear love for the medieval period, but also medieval fantasy. And so there are so many things about the medieval period that we find interesting. Swords, castles, knights. And oftentimes we like to adapt that into our own stories that we've created from fresh that are not based in the historical period, but they are based on historical things. And that's what medieval fantasy is. And when we have medieval fantasy, we do see some interesting things happen that you wouldn't see in history. And so what I'm wearing here is something that I got online and I've purposely gotten an outfit that has some historically accurate elements and some very unhistorical elements. Now, one of the things that I love to do on my channel is to have a look at pop culture like Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, and see what's accurate and inaccurate, perfectly admitting that this is fantasy, okay? So they don't have to be perfectly historically accurate, but using it as a great springboard for us to define what is historical and what is not. So now I'm gonna turn <laughs> that on myself <laughs> and we're gonna be doing that to me, but I'm not gonna be doing it. I'm going to invite the crowd here to do that. Now, how many of you here are reenactors? There's some, some reenactors. Alrighty. So one of the things that's really impressed me about the reenactment community is how incredibly informed they are when it comes to medieval accuracy. And so I think some of these people will be able to rip what I'm wearing to shreds. And so, take a, good, take a good look, if you can see anything, I can't believe I've done this. I have committed one of the greatest sins I could ever do on Shadowversity. I'm not wearing my sword! Oh my goodness, where is my sword? Oh my, I can't believe that whole time I didn't have my sword on me. Alright, so now take a good look. <laughs> All right. See what is accurate if you can pick it out and what might be inaccurate. And then if you, can, if, if you have one thing that you think might be out of place with what I'm wearing, raise your hand and I'm going to invite you to come on in. Oh, go on already. Would you like to come on in? Oh, that's fine. So, what is your name? My name's Anita. It's your telecom system. Well, that is... <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> well done. Well done. I, I have a feeling that they didn't have advanced technology like this in the medieval period. That is absolutely correct. Alright. Does anyone else? We have a hand up here, right here. Come on in. Your boots. My boots! Well done! What... Right here, hold this, because what is inaccurate about the boots I'm wearing specifically? Uh, the lacing. The lacing. Uh, well, the sole design and not... Yep. And to go right round. Yep. Uh, and also the height. The height, thank you, You're spot on. See, my audience amazes me. You have no idea how much my audience has actually educated me on the things that I attempt to educate other people on. And so, the boots is absolutely right. What you're going to find in the medieval period is that large high boots that kind of come up to the knee is actually something that more came in towards the beginning of the Renaissance and after. And the earlier you go in the medieval period, you'll find the boots to be lower. And the other thing is the lacing. Even in the 15th century where some of the boots started to go higher up the calf, full lacing like this on the front is not something that you would see very often at all. You would see straps, buckles, and sometimes leather kind of lacing that would loop through and be pulled around and tight, but full lacing like this? No, not exactly. All right, so that's the first one. Well done, let's give him another clap for pointing that one out. All right, you sir, come on in. And look, I'll bring that shield. That shield is a special shield. In my opinion, it is the greatest shield of all time. The kite shield is well, completely subjective, but how are you, mate? What is your name? Uriah Maskell. Sorry? Uriah Maskell. Uriah Maskell. So, here you go, sir. What is inaccurate about one of the things I'm wearing? The belt is hanging down. It is hanging down. Is it not meant to? 
It kind of depends on period. This is, a, this is a tricky one. And so some of the things I'm wearing do come from certain historical periods, but they're not meant to go with other historical periods. And so it really depends on which era you think I'm trying to reflect here. And so you're, you're right. Sometimes this belt would not fit. Absolutely. So let's give it a clap. Thank you very much. Awesome. So out of interest, what period do you think I'm trying to wear here? Renaissance? Like oh, 1400 transitional. Yeah. So one of the big giveaways is going to be this sword I'm wearing. See, one of the interesting things you're going to find in um, when you look at medieval history, and especially movies, movies make this mistake all the time. There's a movie called Ironclad that does this. The long sword is a weapon that doesn't appear until about 1350. Okay, before that time, there's going to be one-handed swords. Now, I want to make a caveat here. Generally, there's exceptions to everything I say. When it comes to the medieval period, there's far more of what we don't know than what we do know. But from most references, right here, will give a good baseline for what period I'm reflecting. The other thing about this sword is that this sword reflects a type of long sword that actually came in after a bit of development. And so you'll notice that the, t the tip is very fine, tapered and pointed. And so this will let us know, okay, this is a long sword that probably comes in around the 14th, sorry, 15th century, 1400s. And so this is called a Type 18B long sword, according to the Oakshot typology, which is a very fancy way of categorizing swords that barely anyone remembers. And I, I barely remember it either. I only remember the Type 18 because that's the name of this sword and I love it. So if I'm going for around late 1300s, 1400s, that's going to point out some additional inaccuracies about what I'm wearing. All right, hands, who would like to point something out that, come on in, mate, I'll get the mic again. Oh, I, 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 I like your swords. Hi, Internet. Hello. <laughs> if you're going for the later period, really, really baggy trousers, and I'm assuming they're trousers. Mm -hmm. um, back, uh, back then, they had very, very tight fitted mm -hmm. hose. Um, which sometimes had a broad piece, sometimes didn't. Mm -hmm. um, that looks baggy as all anything. They are very baggy indeed. Well done. Thank you very much. Now, when I started getting into the medieval period, I used to think if something was medieval, well, it was therefore medieval, and you could expect to see it in any culture and in any time in the medieval period. But the more I've studied into this, the more nuance I've found, and I've discovered this is a really sophisticated, interesting topic. All right, we're coming. All right. What's what? Oh, yes, the wristband is very inaccurate. Thank you very much. All right. What I've discovered when looking into the medieval period is that things were actually quite different depending on the culture that you look at and the specific period. Things were different in Italy than they were in France and they were in Britain, all in the 13th century. And then if you change that time period as well, things changed again. And so there's a lot of diversity and you'll find differences in fashion as well. And so I'll add a caveat to the baggy pants. I think there actually might be some instances where you will see baggy pants later on. It all, it all depends. It's all very dependent on where you're looking at. But having said all this, there are some general trends that do apply more broadly overall. All right, so is there anything else I'm wearing that I can point out that is historically accurate? You young, young lady, come on in. So, so what is your name? Caitlin, it is wonderful to meet you, Caitlin. So rip me apart. What, what is wrong with what I'm wearing? Two things. You have glasses. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. And you be walking around with a blunt sword. Well, you're, you're right. This is actually a sharp sword. <laughs> but, very keen observation. You would expect it to be blunt, but I'm obviously a savage. So, thank you very much, Caitlin. All righty, so we're coming towards the end. Is there anything else that anyone can point out? I think I haven't... You young sir, come on in. How are you? What's your name, mate? Uh, Lice Hockey. Lice Hockey, is it? Yes. Awesome, good to meet you. Let's see in front of the camera. Say hello to the internet. Hello. And what am I wearing that is historically inaccurate? I don't, have, I don't know how anyone has got this yet, but your microphone. My microphone, well, you're absolutely right. There was some, te like, pointing out the technology is wrong, but the microphone, absolutely, you're absolutely right. Thank you very much, mate. All right, we might have time for one more and then I will kind of cut my own head off and point out some of the last ones. Mate, come on in. How are you, what's your name? Joel. Joel, good to meet you, Joel. All right, so what is wrong with what I'm wearing here? Your underwear. 
How, how do you know, Joel? Can you be sure? I, I can go pretty accurate. I'm not going to show you. But thank you. <laughs> All right, so let's give Joel a hand here. Now, I've forgotten your name. Arno. Arno. Arno has this wonderful sign. Do you want to grab this? You need to bring the sign in. Let, let the internet see this glorious sign. Yell it for you as soon as you show it. What? Mount Dragons! <laughs> All right. All right, so something inaccurate about what I'm wearing here. Okay, well, I can't be sure, but uh -huh. um, the lining of those cuffs, were they hand stitched? I don't think they were hand stitched. I think, but you've actually also stumbled upon something rather significant outside of just the manufacturing. And it's the question of how common were these types of stitchings in. The 14, or sorry, 15th century if I'm aiming for the 1400s with this type of longsword. And I was talking to some reenactors who really know their stuff, and they were saying, in actual fact, if you're going to sign fancy up either the, uh, the tabard you're wearing or the hoopland, 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 I think the type, you would actually see like a full brocade, which is a pattern all over the thing. And that stitching like this is actually something you would more see in say amongst the Vikings or so. Now I want to double check that. If anyone knows in the comments, let me know. And you've just discovered, so thank you so much for coming on. You. You've discovered something I do with my channel. Google is not always the best resource to find accurate information. And I think the, the evidence for this is that so many people do look to Google and get misinformed. And so one of the things that I do after I try and do my research is I ask my audience. These are people who do reenactment, love medieval history, medieval fantasy, and it is amazing the things they know. And they send me resources, links, and I've learned so much. And so here's another thing that I'm going to throw out to them. If anyone knows about uh, where this kind of stitching comes in, leave them in the comments. And if you would like to know the answer, well, check out this video once it's uploaded and have a look at the comments. If I get a good answer, I'll pin it to the top and we all get to learn more. One last thing that I'll mention is uh, this kind of tunic that I'm wearing here, okay? Now, I would call it a tunic. At a stretch, you could call it a hoopland. Now, hoopland is a piece of medieval outerwear that had really long sleeves, and that's why I'd say, well, I'd probably be hesitant to call this a hoopland because it doesn't have really long sleeves. It has some baggy sleeves, but I think it falls in the tunic kind of area. But what you'll find with tunics specifically, this wasn't, this wasn't represented on every type of the outerwear, but with tunics, the further you go into the medieval period, the shorter they become. And so if I was wearing a tunic that's more accurately representative of the 1400s, this would be much shorter. <laughs> So the one I'm wearing right now is actually far more common around, say, the 1200s or late 1200s, early 1300s. And this creates a wonderful word. I hope everyone will remember this word. It's one of my favorite. An anachronism. Have you ever heard of that word? Yeah. yeah. So one of the core meanings of this word is when you have something from one period in time matched with something in another period in time where they're not supposed to go together. They're actually separate. And so what you would call what I'm wearing here is very anachronistic because I'm wearing a tunic type garment with a sword that is clearly from the 15th century and they don't really fit together. Now, this is all related to pure historical accuracy when you're trying to represent a historical period as best you can. When it comes to fantasy, you can take liberties like this. And if you find something that looks interesting, you can incorporate it, that's perfectly fine. One of the better standards to use with fantasy if it's functional and practical. And that's one of the reasons why I like this sword frog, because it's really functional and practical. Just attach my sword in and take it out when I want to sit down. And there we go. So this has been, this is the inaccuracy about my new medieval-ish outfit. And I think we've been able to learn a thing or two from it. So thank you everyone for turning up. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. Thank you very much. And of course, I hope to see you again. So until that time, farewell.